Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Lame Book Club podcast. My name is Melissa. I'm Ellie. And we are back with episode 20. I don't know why that feels like a big milestone to me. Isn't it 21? No, it's 20. Last week was 19. I'm telling huh. you. <laughs> I'm, look, let me look it up right now. I'm telling you it's 20. <laughs> I only ask yeah. because oh you're right. I who am I, I to know. Doubt? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, episode twenty. <laughs> um, I, yeah, part five of Iron Flame. Next week is gonna be our last Iron Flame episode, which I'm gonna say this now because I say it, it's probably not gonna happen. But I might. You think you're cry. gonna cry? Oh my gosh! I might. You're not gonna cry. I don't know. I cried so hard reading the end of the book, but because I'm like know that I'm mental like I already know what's happening now and because I know we're gonna talk about it I wouldn't be surprised if I don't but I was sobbing when I was reading it for the first time (laughs) I cried but honestly it felt like more of a like peer pressure to cry I mean I get it I I didn't I mean I everyone told me like oh it's sad you're gonna cry so I kind of expected it but I did not I think because what happens wasn't the quote unquote sad that I was mm-hmm. expecting, it caught me off guard and I I really cried. <laughs> I yeah. cried way harder than I would have. I think yeah. like genuinely, I think I cried harder than any point during the act. I cried a couple times reading Akatar and I'm pretty sure you I cried, cried harder. harder at that mm-hmm. than any point in Akatar. Absolutely sure not, did. dude. I lost my mind when Rhysand died for the like one whole page I knew he would live I knew he would live because I I had spoiled it for myself on accident but it's just the like self-sacrificial how he died I lost my mind I cried for probably 45 minutes like hard bawling Mm -hmm. and there was no saving me no that I didn't even cry a little bit I'm like there I I knew I was like there's absolutely no way he's dying so I wasn't even a little bit sad and like you said he was dead for like a page and a half so couldn't be if me. maybe he had stayed dead longer I would have been like oh my gosh this is real and maybe I would have been more sad but it that didn't even phase me I'm swear <laughs> no 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 I mean All I right. was bummed okay you're right we're not even talking about that anywhere um <laughs> how was your week Ellie <laughs> It's good. Um, I was telling you earlier, I went to Costco. It was my first official Costco trip as a member um, mm. in my adult years. Congratulations. Like my own Welcome card. to the club. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. I quickly realized I really don't need to be shopping at Costco. No. I don't. have nothing I need in bulk like that. Like I was just looking for, I think it was cream cheese and they were selling it by the massive two gallon tub. The gallon. And I'm like, yeah. I don't need this. So I got 24 bagels. And I've they're gonna go bad before of, you can eat them all. I put I put twelve of them in the freezer. Okay, so that's good. And we're two in already. At this rate, we're flying. We're gonna. There's no stopping you <laughs> at this rate. <laughs> but I got really into Nova Lox, which is mm, salmon, yeah. smoked salmon on bagels. So I wanted to make them at home, and that's what I did. That was my whole week, my entire week. Nova Lox bagels. Just making. Lox- <laughs> <laughs> okay, I remember we. Ellie and I went to GCU for college and there was an Einstein bagel on campus. And that was the first time I had ever heard of a lox bagel. I love and they, Einstein's. They scared me. They still scare me. I'm not gonna lie. I like salmon, but the idea of that bagel makes me really nervous. I don't oh, why? know. Why? Why? I don't know. It's, did Fish? you try it? No, because it scared me. Also, <sighs> they put capers on there and I don't like capers. They're too salty. I hear that from a lot of people. Um, it doesn't phase me. I love, I love everything on that bagel. Maybe not the tomato, but I love everything on that bagel. I'll eat you the put tomato. tomato. I want it complain. at home. No. Did you put? I, I don't even put capers on it at home. It's just, just cream, cream cheese, cheese bagel. Cream cheese, ba- cream cheese salmon bagel. Yes. <laughs> I put my cream cheese on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. There's just something yeah. about that bagel that makes me nervous, and I think it's the fact that it's a fish. But it, yeah. again, it's so like random because I eat salmon. Like I'm not, I eat fish. But do you eat it's smoked that... salmon? Probably. I don't know. You would know. Ordered... What are you saying no, probably ordered... for? 
I only order it. I don't remember what I order. It's it doesn't. I don't ever make like it at home. Cooked, it's not the cooked consistency. It's like the it almost is like raw. Well, I like nigiri, which is just raw salmon. Yeah, it's so, pretty much very similar. Very similar. Yeah. I Anyways, I just realized that um, I don't know what to tell you. The bagel is not the thing I did this week. Actually, I we finished our <laughs> library. I forgot that yes. small detail. <laughs> we're posting I, as of well. It'll already be out when this recording comes out, but the day that we're doing this recording is when we're posting our final or our <laughs> me it's our ours. final post. <laughs> your the final, uh, final part four. Yeah. yeah, it looks so good. Hmm. Thank you. It was I a like labor it. of love. The video it makes was. it seem so quick and easy. It was not. It no, no, was no. horrible. You've been working on this for a while. <laughs> yeah, but it's done. And uh, man. I moved, my seasons changed so quickly. I moved right on to the bagels and forgot all about the library. So (laughs) what'd you do this week? (laughs) I had a crazy week. I don't even remember honestly what happened exactly. Daycare was closed this week. So I had my toddler home with me and the baby while I was working (laughs) for three out of the four days. Um, so that was That's fun. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it wasn't, it's not that bad. It just is like the days all blur together because I didn't go anywhere. I just stayed home and I was working, mm-hmm. but I had both of them with me and it was just long days. Um, my mother-in-law helped me one day by taking the toddler and then my mom helped me the other one, one day too. We just mm-hmm. went over to her house. So I got to like leave, which was nice, but yeah. Yeah, it was just a long week of really not going anywhere. <laughs> nice. So. Love those weeks though. The older you yeah. get, I feel like like younger me, the more I go out, the more proud I was to say what I did this week. Now, the more I stay in, the more proud I am of myself to be like I just stayed in all week and it was fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was nice except I because of I mean, I literally just had zero time to read this week, which made me sad. I started mm-hmm. Ruthless Vows because it came out Mm -hmm. uh, the day after Christmas and I started reading it. So it came out on the 26th. I started reading it on the 27th. As of today, it's January 5th or 6th and I'm still only eight chapters in and I am some books be like that though. You know, no, no, no. no. It's not because I'm not interested in it. It's just because this holiday season is just busy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I recently saw, you know how they're doing the trend of we're sisters You'll take all oh, my clothes. Yeah. And so yeah. people were like, oh, we're readers. Some books I'll read within a fortnight and the others will take me <laughs> four to five years. Yeah. <laughs> like It just, you, you never know. I saw one that made me laugh. It was like, we're romanticy readers. We tolerate much more in books than we do in real life or something. And I just resonated so with true. that so, so much. <laughs> I We talked about it in our last episode. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. You want a little fun question? Yeah, go for it. If you were in a room with every fictional character, romantic character you've ever read about, who are you beelining for? Reese. No, mine's Reese. Oh, Cassian. (laughs) Well, I don't know. I, I love, it's not Zayden. If that, let me just. It's not Zayden for me either. Zayden is top tier, top tier, but not. It's not for me. I, when I first started reading the series, I was like, oh, Zayden wins. Zayden beats everyone. But the now that I've had time to process it and, like, mm-hmm. even just talking about it, like, on here, I'm realizing that he's he's top five, but it's not. Yeah. He's not one anymore. You know what I don't get? The girls that say Lucian. I don't know. Why? I'm sorry. I feel like he's- that's such a force, like... I don't know. No, I don't want to sound to me, mean. But no, oh, well, it just feels like you're heck? trying too hard to be different. That's what it is. Yeah, like it's, I it's like we all know that's not really the answer. Just be real with yourself. Be real with yourself. Be real with us. We know that's not. You're your allowed answer. to like who everyone else likes. Like it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. Anyways. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to be mean either. But that is kind of the vibe. That's it's. Giving. That's what it, it gives. <laughs> it, like that's not real. <laughs> be, yeah. be honest. Self reflect fake a answer. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. Oh, I did. Um, I started drinking coffee this week because oh, of nice. my crazy week. So that's fun. Sorry. Talking Going back, cup. I just remembered because I was drinking it. Um, I actually remember this about you. Melissa 
didn't ever drink coffee. And then one day we were hanging out in college and she goes, I'm trying coffee now. And I said, oh, like, what's your favorite drink? You know, you know, as you do when people, when girls try or people just start to drink coffee, you might try a vanilla latte, a pumpkin spice, something, you know, that the general public likes. Black coffee. I'm just drinking black coffee. Well, no wonder you're not going to like it. What the heck? Okay. I'm going to call myself out here though, too. That was definitely a trying to be different I knew it I wasn't gonna say it to you in the moment but I knew it (laughs) it absolutely was I was just like oh if I'm gonna drink coffee I'm gonna drink coffee I'm not gonna drink a frappuccino or whatever yeah but it's it's one of those it didn't work because it sucks girls I love (laughs) that I love that we just talked about it and yet we are that and that is the moral (laughs) of the story everyone (laughs) and that's why you can't really judge anyone (laughs) but you can also judge everyone exactly <laughs> but, but at the i same am time, them and they are me <laughs> <laughs> so i can judge myself and they are me by extension <laughs> and if I you learn nothing else sometimes. know that <laughs> <laughs> i kind of hate okay. that this is what i've become i'm just kidding um all right oh <laughs> thank you for being here don't forget to like uh subscribe if you're on youtube follow us on instagram if you don't already we post some funny things too I honestly yeah. making reels has become one of my favorite things to do. And now that we've been doing it for a little bit, I see the world in reels. I'm not kidding. I will be watching something on TV and I'm like, Oh, that would be a funny reel. And like, pause it, look it up on YouTube or like try and film it if I can't find it anywhere. And I just, have, I love that. I have an album on my phone of just things that I'm like, this could turn into something. Except yeah, the Melissa's problem is a I freaking forget. monster. I forget about most of them. That's the problem. Got to jot them. I have them. notes. I have a notes of like real ideas, except mine's like that. blank 100% of the time. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, well, and I'll also like message you or something and be like, we should do this. But because it's not in like my normal spot, I'll be like, I have an idea. And then it just stays there and never goes anywhere. But that's a personal problem. Hey, if I'm making a new year's resolution, there's my, there's my resolution to be better. Just to be better. <laughs> Just be better All around. in general. Be better. <laughs> but That's it, so fair. Um, it means a lot. If you haven't already left us a review, go ahead and do that. We like reading them. Um, and we'll read them on here. It's fun. Um, yeah. Well, with that being said, today's episode is chapters 41 through 50. So, Ellie, are yes. you ready? <gasps> I'm oh. so ready. <laughs> What? Sorry, you're saying yes to me saying your name. I thought you were just like really jumping the gun and saying, I'm so ready. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but you weren't. All right, jumping in. Chapter 41. Um, So where we left off last episode was them showing up in Caldir with, uh, well, they, Mira, Violet, and Brennan thought they were being sneaky mm-hmm. and just showing up. And then Zayden was already there. Um, So they're shocked at this point the revelation of the fact that he's there honestly again i said this last episode i'm just i still enjoyed the book so much but now that i'm thinking about it i want to call out things that in my head don't make sense Mm -hmm. the fact that he was able to beat them there i get it he was not in erasure he was doing flight stuff or whatever but the excuse that's given in the book is that sigail could feel Taryn leaving Mm mm-hmm but, like, Taryn didn't actually tell them what was happening. I know Zayden's not stupid. Like, he can probably put two and two together. That if they're leaving, he knows, like, Violet, he knows that she's probably going to want to, like, do something. But I don't know. It felt weak <laughs> to me. <laughs> um, Like, a weak excuse. I don't know. It would have made way more sense to me if he was, like, if... She wrote it that like, oh, well, I was coming here to do my own secret negotiations or something like Mm -hmm. genuinely that would have been like, awesome. Wow. What coincidence? You know, like I just I go so back and forth on the writing. Like I I like the general story, but there are there. It's exactly that. There are a lot of like, how would that have happened? That's way too coincidental. But then also I have to check myself and think exactly how else. Like, what am I really expecting? I don't know. It's it's a lot of back and forth between was this well written or am I just going along too much? I don't know. 100%. And I say this knowing full well that I could never write something even remotely as good. So who am I 
to be judging this. I just, that's just my personality well, is just to play devil's advocate. Here's my devil's advocate portion to that sentence. In, in ideographic design, in the design world, a lot of the times I'll design something and I can go ask another designer, Hey, what do you think about this? And they can give me the technical, I don't, you know, you should change whatever, whatever, but the general audience, they're not designers. It's just the public. It's just whoever that's That's who's absorbing. So you do kind of have us as the regulars do have a right and opinion on, was this well-written in my view? Because this, I'm the, I'm the audience that you're doing it for. It was written for us. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Just look at us. Lame thoughts. Literary analysis <laughs> with Melissa and Ellie. I also, okay, I, I know if you don't actually watch, because we do a video recording as mm-hmm. well, if you don't actually watch that and, like, see the trailer, you can hear the music if you're just listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever, but <laughs> I realized not too long ago that we never fully explained the name of our podcast. It does mm. in the title sequence, like our opener. No better time than episode 20. Am 20. I right? Exactly. <laughs> um, we're not making fun of book clubs. We love book clubs. The lame book club stands for literary analysis with Melissa and Ellie. <laughs> Yeah, we're calling ourselves lame because we don't know nothing about nothing. We're just chumps. We're just talking. <laughs> we're just chumps. We're actually, though, not really calling anything lame. It just worked with our names and the, yeah. what we're doing. But I realize now, I, I realized not too long ago, I'm like, oh my gosh, we didn't actually ever like verbally clarify. I just don't want anyone to ever think we're making fun of it because that's not the point. <laughs> I'll put a PSA out there. Although I hope no one thinks that we got called out and that's why we're saying that's it. That's true. Because we didn't. We're preemptively saying we're we preemptively love book clubs. We're preemptively on episode 20 saying <laughs> that we didn't do <laughs> This wasn't our fault. All right. Um, all right. So back to 41. <laughs> Sorry, back to <laughs> Um, I also, okay, I, I do, uh, I don't want to keep talking about things I don't like, but I did not, as the Grinch would say, hate, 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 hate. Double hate, mm-hmm. <laughs> loathe entirely. Um, the first interaction between Violet and Zayden when they get there, how mm-hmm. Zayden, I mean, I didn't love the way Zayden was talking to her, but I mostly didn't like Violet's reaction to it. He said, you're not where I left you. And she's like, are you saying I'm a pet or something? I'm like, don't get me wrong. He didn't communicate very well. But to be fair, you are in the wrong <laughs> in this situation. Zayden only for this like her safety just said I mean he didn't really ask her not to he straight up told her not to which is a little unfair but he knows more about the Viscount he knows more about poor Emil he knows more about everything that's happening in this situation than Violet does so the weight of his no it's not safe feels heavier to me than Violet's desire to just help respectfully and a hundred percent disagree. I think. What? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's why we do this. Well, no, this is fun. I'm glad. I like to hear your. I opinion. think Violet is in the right. Um, he's so overbearing in these chapters that it actually got annoying. He is pretty to me. overbearing. Number one, I actually if you're have not a gonna... talking point at some point about that. <laughs> okay, number one, if you're not gonna tell her why she can't go, just don't go. Don't go. Um, I'm going to make my own decision then, because all I think is like already he's displayed, you know, I want to protect you at all costs. I want to protect you from everything. I want to protect you from yourself. Okay. So if you're going to do that, then I'm going to make my own decisions and your boat holds a little less weight because you're just kind of mama bearing me. So I'm going to go. And I, and like for Violet, she knows that the luminary makes the big difference. So, and it's all up to her. Why wouldn't you? And she brought Mira and Brennan. So mm-hmm. to me, I, when I, it's uh, not like she went by herself. You're right. When I accidentally wrote the summary for this, cause I didn't realize Melissa had already done it. Whoops. I wrote that this really pulled a lot of Edward Cullen for me. I don't know Ooh. why my mind jumped there, but it's just the overbearing, overprotective. Just trust me. I'm just going to just don't do this. Hmm. I guess I get that. I see. I think we're both right. Well, here's what I think in a perfect world, what should have happened is Zayden aired his grievances as he did. Mm-hmm. Violet counters with her opinion as she did. Mm-hmm. And then they go together. That's really what should have happened, yeah. but didn't. And I just don't, here's what I didn't like is I didn't like that Violet was putting words in his mouth. 
all he said was, you're not where I left you. Yeah. Is that the best thing to say? No. But to just jump to like saying, oh, so you're saying, what am I, a pet? Like, mm-hmm. that's, no. I, Ellie, you're not where I left you. Is that, am I calling you a pet? No. No, but I'm immediately when you place. said that, I was like, well, you don't own me. So <laughs> <laughs> I see I guess, it both ways. <laughs> I, okay, that's what I'm saying. I, I see where, I see it too. I just yeah. don't like that she, it was at like a level five and I feel like she brought it to a nine. And yeah. I have more to say on that throughout the rest of this interaction, but it just, I don't know. I, I just loved so much. Their communication was so great in fourth wing. And I just feel like in this book, it's been not as great. And that was one of the reasons I loved fourth wing so much. So that's why I'm getting, it makes me more irritated than I think it would have if their communication yeah. sucked in the first book too. Yeah. So that's fair. That's that. Um. Also, it seemed really out of character for me like Zayden makes comments like, Oh, you should see their butterfly garden or, Oh yeah. Like Mm. wait till you see the room or whatever. And for her, like Violet is a smart girl. She is not stupid. She knows that Zayden and cat used to be thing. She knows that cat's a flyer. I, I understand she didn't assume that she's the niece of the Viscount, but he, she knows. And she knows like Zayden's been giving them weapons. She knows that Zayden has a close relationship Mm-hmm. To, to some extent at, at the very least with the viscount i mean mm-hmm. he's been she knows that he had some kind of weird deal with him she didn't know what it was but she, she knows that like I, it would not be weird at this point based on everything she knows for him to have been there a handful of times so the fact that she doesn't put two and two together of that cat is the reason he would have been there or at least part of it to I me mean, she was does so within dumb. within a few pages she does but only because someone says go get hi. she walks up and says hi uncle and then she's like oh it's not yeah, because she figures true. it out <laughs> like, yeah i don't know i mean i just was like she's smart she figured all this stuff out on her but own. you're looking at this from the perspective of we're like psycho girls because if i That's found true. out like my husband dated someone he never told me about or something I'm i would know her agent. social security number That's by true. lunch so for us like that's crazy that you didn't put those things together. I would Ellie, have. you're so right. You're so right. Violet is not that girl. She is so much no. more trusting than She's I could ever stable. be. <laughs> She's so much more stable. Wow. You really, I, you, you win. Not that we were even arguing, but you win. You're so right. I didn't even think about it like that. Um, all right. So then they're going back and forth about her decision to come without him. And like we're talking about, I don't know. I just, at this point when they're going back and forth, I keep flip-flopping on who I think is right. Like at one point Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you, you know what? Actually, Violet, you're making some good points. And then she'll say something. Never mind. Unhinged. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, Zayden, you're back. Like, (laughs) I just felt like I kept flip-flopping the entire page and a half of their conversation, like mental conversation to each other. But I think that's Um, good because then it causes you to not side with one character and see the other one in bad light. Like, you're like, yeah, we're pretty evenly wrong and right here. That's true. Well, and so this, I'm not too long ago mentioned, I have a talking point about this. This is where I mm-hmm. wanted to bring it up. Okay. I think I started to get irritated more with Re- or with Reese, with Zayden in this conversation because part of the reason why we liked him so much in the beginning was that he was not Dane. He wasn't too controlling. He wasn't too overbearing. He wasn't holding her back or telling her she can't do this. Mm-hmm. He was all about... Granted, I, he wasn't, he even says this in this conversation. He's like, I wasn't in love with you then. I get, yeah. I get the protective love that yeah. like, he feels, but I, part of the reason I think everyone loved him so much is because he reminds us of Reese in that sense that he yeah. always gave her the choice mm-hmm. and he is no longer doing that. And I think this conversation made me realize that. And then I was like, all right, a team Violet again. <laughs> like I said, kept flip-flopping. But at the end of it, I decided I was team Violet. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I love, though, that, that she really calls dis- him out. was disappointed. Yeah. I love that she calls that- him out and she's like, you know who you're acting like? Dane. Dane. And then yep. slams the door in his face. And I felt like he he needed that. He did need that. I feel like it was a like swift kick in the arse for him. Mm-hmm. He really <laughs> brought him back down. It humbled him a little <laughs> because he hates Dane. 
<laughs> yeah, so. which is good. And then he he apologized like immediately after. Well, with when he saw her next, he apologized for being overbearing. So that was a nice resolve. Yeah, mm. and then while she's talking to Zara, the girl getting helping her get ready, they it comes up that they up until like a couple years prior to this they were trading with the Isles but then Mm -hmm. that's kind of just all that is mentioned and this is not some like big revelation I feel like it's fairly obvious but I am like nine million percent sure that the Isles are going to come in at some point in the rest of the three books Mm -hmm. and I'm based on just a little bit that we get in this portion of Iron Flame I am so excited to see how that ties in because yeah well all the stuff that the Viscount has that he's traded with the aisles for like that the mm-hmm. the beautiful silk all of the like cool i just like lots of colors i don't think i realized how drab navarre seems until they start talking excuse yeah me, until they start talking about how cool yeah uh, cordon is and all the stuff that the viscount has and like just how ornate everything is i didn't even realize that we were missing that so mm-hmm. to have all of that now like tied in more and i have zero theories on how they're gonna get pulled in i'm sh- maybe as i'm talking out loud maybe it has something to do with the venom and they know more than anyone realizes and maybe i don't know but yeah. i'm just excited for that to tie in with the story because i think it's just gonna make it very different than how it's been and i think it's just gonna have if she writes it well which i have all the faith that she will it's going to be a cool twist in kind of like the way things are done and how they bring that back to the continent and like inner there's gonna be new characters and I don't know all that. Yep. Yep. Um, fun fact. Also, we're, I'm just going to a little sidebar here. We are officially doing throne of glass next. Woo-hoo. Oh yes. A lot <laughs> of this reminds me of throne of glass, which I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying one thing or another, but there's no it, original ideas anymore. Honestly, I everything know, gets recycled. It's so similar. And it, I wrote it down. So when we go over it in Throne of Glass, because it's, I mean, you got to, it's like the eighth, no, the seventh book out of eight. So we'll, it'll take some time, but next, maybe yeah. next year when we get there, I'll bring this back up. <laughs> next year, or it's 2024. We'll do it this year. <laughs> we can help. It's a lot of yeah, books. that's true. Anyways. I don't know. I just think. If the exact storyline is copied, that's a little bit different, but like, right. You, there's I no know that there's not original. Anymore. I know that, but w- when we get to it, you'll see it. And yeah. I wonder if you'll think the same thing. You know what though? Hmm. Since we're already talking about this, I think mm-hmm. that might be one of the reasons why I liked divine rivals so much. Cause it's so it's different than all these stories. Yeah. It is as original as any other. It's uh, cause I mean, not that I'm over here liking like the raunchiest stuff ever, but it's very young adult. Like, uh-huh. so I'm surprised I liked it as much as I did. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I just think it's because like, it feels like historical fiction, yeah. but also fantasy at the same time. I don't know. She did a Rebecca Ross. I think she goes by Becca cause that's her Instagram name. I don't know, but she did such a great job at infusing the genres together it felt like a new genre almost to me. Uh, yeah. So I that I think now that we're talking about it, I'm really because I'm I'm every time I talk about the book, I'm like I can't really explain why I like it so much. It just is so cool. I think that's why now that I'm mm-hmm. realizing because it's a whole new, it. whole new side of fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But anyways, um, I think this Rebecca <laughs> Rebecca Yaros did a really 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 good job starting at this point of replacing Varish with someone else that we can hate equally as much, but for different reasons, because they fight over a boy, which is like so dumb in the grand scheme of things, but it is just another relatable You forgot thing. to mention we're talking about Kat. Oh, you're right. So sorry. I feel like <laughs> everyone kind of realized where I was going with this one. Though. Yeah, yeah, I did. But with freaking Catriona, like mm-hmm. their whole thing is over a boy, which in the grand scheme of things, especially with what's happening in this storyline, it is so minuscule. So does it matter? But well, it does. But it, it does. Because but it does. <laughs> he's well, like it, the heir to Arisha, basically. So she wants to. She wants the crown. Well, first off, we don't know that yet at this point. We think she just is in love with him. Second of all, 
I think we it's, could figure it out. I figured it out by this I, chapter. I didn't. I genuinely thought she was in love with him. That's the so. psychopath in me. I immediately <laughs> was like, the niece of the Viscount makes sense. I get it. <laughs> I just assumed she thought that she was a more suit. Like, I, I guess this comes from like all like the Princess Diaries stuff that I watched and read growing up. She just uh-huh. figured she was a better fit, like status wise than Violet. Cause mm-hmm. Violet is just the daughter of the general. Yeah. But she is, I mean, I guess in reality, it's not really her uncle is second in line for the throne. So she's actually fairly far removed still, but I just, I just assumed it was like a status thing and that she genuinely, no, Mm -hmm. not me. Didn't, didn't even think about it. When that got brought up, I was like, wow, didn't even realize. (laughs) Yeah. Mind blown. I just was so, but again, I think it's because Rebecca Yaros, for me at least did such a good job at making me focus on like such the, like a petty, yeah like thing to be upset about Mm -hmm. but it's also so i mean oh my gosh growing up if you liked a boy and another girl liked that same boy that might as well that was my world war ii like that was for me maybe that was a bad comparison but for me that was like the biggest thing ever (laughs) i'm not going into that on the internet (laughs) but it was i don't know it was just like it couldn't have been a bigger deal for me. Like that was, yeah, no, a hundred percent. agree. Of, yeah. And I, it just is so, again, it's just so relatable. I thought it was so fun, but also not fun at the same time. Cause you hate it. Yeah. Just how that you could just get so focused on such a petty. I love when books thing. pull jealousy out of me. I've said it yes. before multiple times, but this is what happened again. And so it was good. Yeah. I enjoyed this. Agreed. Um, and then the fact that the Viscount wanted Violet to blow up Zayden's father's, like, priceless chest, and Violet just, like, didn't even hesitate. Be like, sure, I'll do it. After Zayden's like, we're going to leave. And I, mm-hmm. I get it. He wasn't saying we're going to leave because he didn't want the chest to be blown up. But to me, like, just no hesitation, without pause, without being, like, even, like, an internal thought of being, like, wow, I can't believe I ha- this is what I have to do, but I have to do it. Like, Mm -hmm. I was kind of like, I wish we had that. I wish that we had at least one line of her internal thought process being like, I wish it could have been anything else, but I'll do it for the luminary. I'll do it to save everyone. I was actually glad we skipped past that because I was like, I don't need to hear how this is sad and sentimental. It would make sense to the story, personally. I did think it was funny that we skipped past it. I I was surprised. That's what I was That's what I'm saying. If we, we spent enough time establishing how priceless this is and how it was his dad's most treasured thing mm-hmm. and how he gave it. I mean, I, I think it was supposed to more than anything. I think it was supposed to symbolize how important everyone af- outside of Zayden felt like the initial agreement was of Zayden and Kat being mm-hmm. together and like the, um, what he broke off. I get that, but that, that Violet's personality is that she's just so selfless. She cares so much about other people more so than herself. So the the fact that she wasn't, it, we didn't even get a line. We've already established, we spent time establishing how priceless this thing was. So I just think one line of her being like, man, I wish it could have been anything else, but I'll do it to save everyone. Mm-hmm. That for me, I would have been satisfied. I was like, it, it is what it is. It just yeah. felt a little out of character for her to be like, I'll do it without even yeah, yeah, yeah. acknowledging mm-hmm. that it would suck mm-hmm. to do it. Yep. But that's just me. Um, I also don't, I didn't personally love the fight with the Venom. Um, I thought it was a cool twist. No, no, I no, can't believe you wrote that. I loved it. No, no, no. I thought the concept of it was really cool. I did not see that coming. I really didn't yeah. expect the Venom to jump out of the chest. But I thought the actual fight, <clears throat> the actual fight was really anticlimactic. Like it was we don't have any weapons. Oh my gosh, you gave him a weapon and Mira can't use her shields this far out and now Brennan's here and we're all going to die and then all of a sudden Violet killed him. Like it was like... it. Well, no. Number that's one. That's how it felt. Venom pops up. Let me paint the scene better for you. I imagine remember. You I just read it. it. No, imagine I did read it. But imagine. Okay. <laughs> Venom pops out. Horror, scared. Mira, get out of here. No, I'm not going to leave you, Violet. Mira throws a knife at him catches it now it's, no it stabs him a, but he just has it <laughs> now he has the weapon great violet says that didn't help 
<laughs> then Zayden makes to come down to the field. Violet, no. <laughs> Stay there. We need the luminary. Eyes on the prize. Amazing. <laughs> then Brennan comes down. We can use him. That's good. Venon goes to the ground to suck all the power. You know that they're going to die. They can't outrun that. Mira, shield us. No, I can't. Not without the wards. Mira, do it or we're dead. Shields. Which I all side note, I think that's going to come back into play a lot more now that oh, we know 100%. Mira can shield without wards. Such a badass moment. I loved it. Then, totally. Taryn, how far out are you? Timing is so important. Picks <laughs> Vi- Well, Mira and Brennan run away. Picks Violet up. Violet shocks the ground that's wet, leaving the venom fried. You're telling me you didn't love that? I loved it so much more how you just explained it than that's the way it was written in the you book. Gotta in, you got to be in the right mindset. You got to be in here, baby. You got to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, electrocution at the end to me, I was like, okay. I mean, it was, it was different. I'm glad he didn't just different. get struck with the lightning, I guess. But Yeah, I I was glad it wasn't a moment of, oh, I can all of a sudden aim and I'm so much better when Which, my when my family's in need, I can do it. I'm true. glad that that was consistent. She's just so smart that she knows how to work her inconsistencies to her favor. Exactly. And see, this is why I'm like, Violet is so smart. So the fact that she didn't just assume he knew this palace because of Kat mm-hmm. doesn't make sense. But I'm going to stop talking about that. Um <laughs> I agree though. I except she did strike the chest first, first try without yeah. realize like without even attempting to aim. But whatever. To me, that was. Just, I didn't realize I, she did. I thought she missed a few times. No, she hit it first try. She told Mira she's like we're gonna be here for a while, and then Mira's like it doesn't look like they're going anywhere, and then the venom popped out. Like mm. and they were like oh we're starting. Like <laughs> I didn't, gotcha, gotcha. Except they didn't expect that. But that that's just like how it initially. Um, started out okay so uh the venon says you'll be quite the prize and to think you'll bring a dragon with you you can't be parted for long can you so we know that the venon's ideal goal was not to necessarily kill violet but to turn her um and i think we kind of get that idea from the sage that visits her in her dreams too is that they want her to be part of them but the fact that he said you would bring a dragon with you do we think that because the rider and dragon are bonded the dragon Either one has to fight for the venom now because they can't turn against their rider, or two also turns venom because of the bond. Well, wouldn't it be wyvern? I don't think. No, they couldn't turn into a wyvern, or just I mean, dark. Isn't a venom like isn't a wyvern like the venom of the dragons? I mean, I, I to be fair, they're not dragons that turned into them. I get it; they're just created. But no, I don't wyvern know. Would have, it still be considered a wyvern? I believe it. Wyvern have two legs. Wyvern yeah. are smaller and than dragons. They're different creatures. They are different, but anyway. No, like they're different know. species. That's an interesting point, though. Yes, I understand. <laughs> I oh. get what you're no, saying. No, like they're animals <laughs> different. <laughs> no, they're animals different. That's a good, they're I like that explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I That's why I'm just going to start saying that, that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone just says something and I'm like, it's, I'm not even going to be talking about animals. I'm just gonna be like, no, they're animals different. And then walk away. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. No. Um, That's an interesting point. I didn't, I think I didn't even think about that either time I read this. I just kind of yeah. was like, yeah, Taryn, they're bonded. She'd bring a dragon. <laughs> but it's something to think about. That's true. Probably. Ooh, goo, that makes me nervous, though. It won't oh, yeah. be. Well, 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 oh. Okay, if you haven't already read the end of this book, skip ahead. Skip forward 30 seconds. No, 60 seconds. I don't know how long I'm going to talk about this. Just skip a little bit. But I, I gave you a warning. If you didn't skip, this is on you. I wonder, now that we know that Zayden is a venom at the end of this. Sigail said, Sigail I chose see- you. And yeah, she but was Sigil like didn't, distraught. But she didn't seem different. She, they didn't Zayden, talk about her after that. Well, so, but, she just like, I mean, left. Well, but I just thought maybe that would, I, I kind of honestly thought that the bond would maybe break between the two of them once that happened. I, I think we, but I guess you're, I mean, if it doesn't, then I'm nervous for Sigail now. And now I'm, and then now I'm sad for Taryn. Yeah, because exactly. Because that's his mate. Exactly. Oh, what's that going to do to Taryn? Oh, it's well, Taryn's exactly. going to be even more, Taryn's going to be even more 
in like grumpy in the next books if their mate bond breaks yeah, yeah but like yeah. wouldn't that kill them um there's speculation that all of them could be subject to turning venom and they need to find a cure before all four of them are toast oh, or that only zayden's affected and sigil has to go along or that sigil and zayden are affected and taryn and violet have to find a cure there's a lot of speculation around all of that but i think it affects definitely rider and dragon in my opinion so we'll see wow yeah all right let's bring Sad. it back okay. all right i didn't even think about that i'm glad you brought that up mm-hmm. um i did like how zayden almost killed takaris though for putting violet in that situation <laughs> how immediately yeah. he was just like shadows choke levitate That's- <laughs> when I first read that, I thought that he was choking him by his, like, with one arm, holding him up by his hand. Oh, and I was like, cool as, as if. <laughs> then it said how the cool. shadows. <laughs> you know what? who could do that, though? Henry Cavill. I was like, I started Mr. watching Incredibles. <laughs> and Mr. Robert Incredible. Parr. There's like two people on this earth. Robert Parr and Henry Cavill. <laughs> Um, no, I just started watching The Witcher. I've been putting it off for so long because I've heard it. Zeke, my husband said it wasn't that great, but I didn't like he's it. He's also. Much. Ah, how could you? And they not? watched like three episodes, and then I tapered out because I didn't think it was too fascinating. It's the first season's really confusing because it jumps time without mm-hmm. telling you it's jumping time. But once you realize that that's what's happening, it's a lot easier to follow. And then everything comes together at the end of season one. So in season two, it's all the same time frame, but. Anyways. I'm glad you're watching um, that though because his character in The Witcher oh is exactly like a character in Throne of Glass and that's, you have the perfect imagery. Well, it doesn't even matter. Thorn of, forget Throne of Glass. He is every book boyfriend ever in this yes. show. He's yes. the definition of and he growled. Or, He's mm-hmm. all, he just kind of talks like this. Except it sounds less like Batman and more just pure <laughs> lust. <laughs> like oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't. We love Henry I can't. Mm-hmm. And his the way that they sh- have his eyes, it may. Uh, I, you haven't read this, but um, the From Blood and Ash series. Mm-hmm. That's exactly how they explain the main male. Hot dang! Eyes. I wonder if he wakes up. But and I had just a hard time picturing it. I'm every book boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. He has to. And you know what? I, as I'm watching the show though, and seeing just how ugh, he is. Even in his 40s, I mm-hmm. I take back what I said earlier about him being too old to play any book boyfriend in any TV series. Mm-hmm. I don't care. He yeah. he can do it. He doesn't look like he's in his 40s. He looks like he's in his 30s. And yeah. even though Reese is 500, he gives off the appearance of someone in his late 20s. I'd believe it. I'd believe Henry was in his late 20s if he was playing him. So I take back what I said episodes ago about him being too old. I stand corrected. He he doesn't age. He ages like a fine wine. He just keeps getting better. <laughs> I, the only reason I'm still watching the okay, show okay, is okay. for him. <laughs> and now I, love it. I will get off my soapbox. But I just liked it. I like he, mm-hmm. he his character totally could have done that. Grab someone by the throat and just like lift him up. I'm pretty sure he does at some point. I can't even remember. But um, then the Viscount <laughs> offers Violet. And her loved ones, her oh, their own aisle. Mm-hmm. If she spends a few years with him, looking out for the wi- riderless wyvern that they've been seeing flying over Cordon. Yeah. And Violet says it's the coward's way out. But if you were in her situation, Ellie, would you have taken it? Um. Think about it. You get your own little island for you and all your loved ones. It's peace. That's what she mostly wants is peace. It's a peaceful life existence. You're as far as you know, you're out of harm's way. From the venom and wyvern and everything, you just get to live your life with your <clears> favorite <throat> pe- people. No, <laughs> I don't think I'd live okay. with myself after that. I know that sounds like the right answer and the honorable noble one, but it actually is probably the one I would take. So, no, I don't think I would. I would stay and fight and be better than that. At the end of the day, I think that's probably what I would do too. I don't know how hard you just tried to sell me on that, is it? (laughs) The longer I think about it, I don't know. It would just take, it would be a really, really hard no for me. It would be a real, and I know it's hard for Violet to say it too, 
but mm-hmm. it would be much more difficult for me. I would take a lot longer to come to that answer than she did and than yeah. you did. Um, <laughs> just because I think I couldn't live with myself for a while, but after a few years of just relaxing on a beach, just sipping Mai Tais with my honey, I think I'd forget pretty easily. <laughs> so just saying. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a good person. I'm not as good of a person as Violet is. <laughs> Okay, are um, we on chapter 43 now? No, but I didn't see his next offer, though, uh, coming oh. of them taking all the flyers with them since it's, no. they're not safe anymore. The wyvern, they've infiltrated their schooling, a school, whatever. I kind of um, figured they needed Kat to stay in the picture to really well, yeah. play the antagonist, but I didn't think that they would do it like this. And it made me mad, no. and which I think oh, is really? what she wanted. Yeah, because I don't it didn't like her. Mad. I don't want them to be around. And they're, oh, to gosh. me... To me, in this book, I am a writer, and they're so much lesser than. So I was annoyed that they had to be around me at all. I guess that's true. You do kind of have the perspective of a writer. Yeah. But I don't know. It didn't make me mad, but I was like, oh, this is a actually, I liked, to me, I'm like, this is good writing. This is a yeah. good way to keep her in the story. There you go. Yeah. It makes sense. And I'm like, ooh, I didn't see it come. Anything I don't see coming, I'm like, wow, most of the time. I guess there are yeah. times where I don't see things coming and I hate it. But um, now we're in chapter 43. But one thing that I just bothered me about how chapter 42 ended is Mira says, there's no way to fly them into Tyrandor. Mm-hmm. Mean, like the flyers and the griffins. But then Zayden just says there is, but no one, but there's no guarantee they'll survive it. And then like the, there's like a few more things said and then the chapter ends and then for chapter 43 opens. They've been in Arisha for three days with everyone. I'm like, uh, you know what? You can't just I say there be like super weird about it and be like, there is one, but they're not going to like it. And then like you. not explain how that is like that. I just honestly cut that out. Just be like, all right, take them back. Right. Maybe she. I mean, they can. They forgot. can make it to. I don't think she forgot. They. they it, I forget things. <laughs> I get it. Their whole thing is the altitude. Like Arisha is a higher altitude. Griffins so, can't do well, but or they don't do as well. But they can fly to the border of Navarre because and Arisha is. I looked at a map and I will bring this back up in a second. But Arisha, it looks like it's near, pretty much right on the border of where poor Emil is with Navarre. So again, I get it. If altitude's the only issue, but like, it's not like it's, it doesn't seem like it's that far of a fly and a flight. And they, we know they can make it to the border. What, I don't know. What I actually thought was happening when I first read it. And was that when he said that he was referring to that hike because Griffins can't fly up to a reach or whatever. They have to hike that little narrow path and that was that was the big thing, like, oh, they won't survive it. But I guess if they've no. been in Eurasia for a few days, no, so, then... I mean, that's what they're doing next. So r- what they do after they've been there, Brennan comes up with this whole plan of... Because he's like, the writers won't respect the flyers until they do the parapet. Because that's mm-hmm. what all writers have to do in order to become cadets. But he sets it up differently so that they're the flyers aren't just that's why they do the hike but then it's also they're risking their griffins lives because riders know like they would never do anything to risk their dragon's lives so it's supposed to help them respect them more or something yeah to me that felt like a stretch i get it but i'm like but that was a good just like bonding experience that's essentially what i wrote is this just a bonding experience for them it is i mean that's the whole point but the they're that's when they're hiking the cliffs of draylor which Mm -hmm. that's what they can't fly well that's like the issue with the uh the altitude and stuff so they can't i think they maybe could but it's just like no telling if they would make it that high or not so i guess that kind of i but look i had to look at a map because i'm like i'm getting confused now we we jump from poor emil to erasia to cliffs of draylor within like eight sentences so i'm like i need to look at a map and the map this is the my one issue with my Kindle is that it's not easy for me to just like flip back to the beginning. Yeah. There is a map in the Kindle, but like I can't really zoom in it and it's really blurry. So I had to look one up online and the map that I looked at online made it seem like 
Arasha literally is the border between Por Emil and Navarre. Like, that's it's right there. The mm-hmm. cliffs of Draelor literally are that border. So they're it's still a part of Arasha, I guess, technically. But at first, I'm like, what the heck? Aren't there, like, I, I was thinking about the wards, and then I remembered there are no wards mm-hmm. in Arasha. So then I was like, okay, that's, never mind. But... I guess that's probably the issue they had with flying. If they can't even like make that flight, that was probably part of the issue with them coming to Erasia, which then yeah. just brings me back to how the frick frack did they do it? And if he s- makes this like mysterious comment about how they might not make it, but then they never address the fact that anyone dies, they must have all made it. So what's the point of even saying that? <laughs> like- it's true. I don't know what to tell you. If I wrote it, I'd apologize but I don't know. Yeah. Also though, there is one thing I want to points for Ellie. I want to boost your theory. Now that you've said that you think Taryn is part, if, if not the part of the Empyrean, um, there's one little mention of Andarna here. Mm-hmm. And Violet says that Andarna was more than a three hour flight from her and Taryn training with the elders Mm -hmm. but he she doesn't say she's training with the empyrean she just says the elders i think Mm. the elders are probably part of the empyrean but they're not all of them and we don't know Mm -hmm. if taryn is considered an elder also or not i mean he's i think old enough to be considered one probably he's one of the oldest dragons no i think she says aren't you an elder and he says like i'm too young for that or something like i'm middle-aged or something like that you're right that is part Mm. of it i forgot about that but regardless but still that doesn't um thanks so anyways the, word, the, the way it was worded though felt intentional yeah me on how like if we find out later on that taryn is actually part of the empyrean we could look back and say see like there won't be holes yeah yes to me so just wanted to yeah. boost your theory a little bit there but um we learned that no one dies when they try to bond a griffin they just have to make that like really high jump and if they don't land on their back they land in the water and they get embarrassed and join a different part of so the yes thing. when i first read this i was like boo 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 but <laughs> how uh Marin, so uh i think maybe it's important to know also violet is talking with Marin, who's cat's best friend yeah. and they're actually getting along which i liked that dynamic because well because like violet Cat's just being nasty to Violet. Violet is doing her very, very best to not be nasty back. And for mm-hmm. the most part, she's not. I am very proud of Violet with how all her interactions yeah. with Cat because she's oh, has a lot more self-control than I would in those situations. Sure. So Marin says, oh, yeah, you know, we just swim back. And Sloane and Violet kind of look at each other like, you don't die? Like, okay. Yeah. And Marin's like, before you look at me like that, she's like, Beskyeth is the weird one. Why are you yeah. killing your cadets on conscription day? And Violet lets that really sink in. And I think that's going to allude to a lot more later on with why are we yeah. killing people? Which is what 100%. I said in the beginning. Wouldn't yep. you rather just have bad flat, bad riders that are still alive rather than only elite riders, but they're very, very few um, personally. So I agree with the first half of what you said, but I just, I, I understand the thought process of not having any, bad flyers i mean the saying you're only as weak as your or strong as your weakest link yeah like if you have a bad flyer they might get other people killed so it's true but i do understand that it's such a numbers game this war that like why are we killing off so many (laughs) they're just thinking quality over quantity i was raised quantity over quality the cheap chinese food (laughs) buffet was the place to go so i'm not used to this we want the goods we don't want the cheap and easy. I understand. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. I do. Excuse me. I don't know why I keep burping today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, the I do agree with what you said, though, about how Baz Gaeth is going to come back and be the weird one. I think I think Zayden and Violet, if not actually, are going to essentially become king and queen of the continent. <laughs> like, oh, I don't think not. Maybe not those titles exactly, but I do think like they're going to. Ish, they're gonna usher in the change they're gonna have to overflow oh this will probably come in some book they're gonna have to overthrow the king because he's set in his ways i think eric will help them do that mm-hmm. but at some point they're gonna have to be if not the leaders 
on the assembly of the new leadership that's going to take over Navarre and open up their yeah. borders, everyone. Um, but they're going to adopt all these other, they're going to, I mean, they're slowly realizing how backwards what they know already is. And so they're going to have to, they're unlearning all of that yeah. to create a better continent and a more inclusive, like, place as a whole. So mm -hmm. I do agree. I think that is leaving breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs for later on. Breadcrumbs. But, <laughs> <laughs> breadcrumbs. I do like, though. Or Salone, I like it doesn't it registers different for Violet than it does for Sloan because when um Marin says that and she's like, You're killing your cadets, and Salone, her first response was, They're not cadets, they're candidates. You're only a cadet once you cross. Mm -hmm. Like essentially meaning like they don't mean anything until they cross. Yeah. And but then Violet's like, wait, but there's still people. Like that's like yeah. that gets her thought process going. And I Yeah. Just I thought I thought it was funny, just stark difference, but mm -hmm. Oh, but then everything that happens with Luella was so sad. I, and so like, misconstrued oh. by Kat. Uh, I don't I'm like not, it. I don't even, we're going to get into that in a second. But I just was like, I, this is probably, I, I know that, well, I know now I didn't realize until Iron, we started reading Iron Flame that, um, Violet is supposed to have ED, EDAH, EDS. EDS, I think. I, I think it's EDS. Um, and that there's a, re she's not just weak. Like her body is more frail because of, uh, I think, I think it's considered to be, uh, like a chronic, well, not a chronic illness. Well, yes, a chronic illness, but I, I actually, I think I looked it up and I want to say it's considered like an autoimmune issue too. Like that's just like the weak joints is just, uh, one of the symptoms. And I think it's not everyone deals with it. Anyways, this scenario i think made me feel for violet the most out of everything with that because like she she we know she's genuinely trying to save both of them it just happened to be the arm that luella was holding on to that dislocated and mm -hmm. she did a really good job at writing the internal battle she felt like she she was trying but like one i can only imagine how much that hurts and two there's literally nothing she can do. Her arm is not functioning. Like her yeah. arm is out of its socket. She can't lift her up at all. And right. she can't have anyone grab her arm because it's out. So like yeah. the only thing that would have possibly saved her is if Luella had been able to hold on long enough for her Griffin to grab her. And yeah. the only reason the Griffin grabbed Visia first is because Visia was in the way. Like mm -hmm. it's not like, oh, I'm just going to save everyone. Like she was- yeah. Or the the Griffin was only trying to save Luella, and the only way to do that was to. Well, get not it. only that, Violet wasn't just someone that was like, "Move, Luella!" Like she well, was, yeah. she and was trying to help her, and yeah. she was trying. But I think it's, I think it's just so important that we recognize Violet, she, Luella, and Violet weren't just like random people crossing. She was actually trying to be kind and help her. Yeah. So it just makes exactly. it burn so much more when Cat's like, "Why did you kill her?" Yeah, and you saved like, your own you know, writer, but not our flyer. Yeah, when literally everyone who saw what was happening, it, even Marin said, flyers, "Yeah, yeah," was like, "No, that's not what happened." Cat, mm -hmm. you need to like stop. But just freaking cat doesn't. She doesn't even care. She just wants ammo for Violet. So now she's making up stuff. Honestly, like at this point, I don't understand how the flyers aren't starting to get irritated with Cat. Mm -hmm. because there are flyers that saw what happened and that were defending Violet. So it's not like only the writers were. If, honestly, if it was just writers, I would get it. Like, but there are flyers that are saying, no, that's not what happened. So how are people not taking into a, the other flyers? I get it. They're mad. Yeah. Like, and they've lost loved ones to these people and stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying that they don't have their own reasons to be irritated, but mm -hmm. I don't understand how they're not mad at Kat for just like, it's very clear at this point that she's just perpetuating tension. And yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking like if I was a flyer, I'd be like, cat, stop. Like, I hate these people for a reason. You're just making up reasons to hate them. Like, that's stupid. I don't mm -hmm. know. No, I would too. But, but then in the midst of that, the <laughs> wyverns show up, which it's perfect timing. Did not expect that, honestly. <laughs> like, I, they're just like, and then because the, oh, the griffin was dying because Luella died. So sad. But Very then sad. all of a sudden it's like, and then gray claws grabbed him and snatched him off. I'm like, what? what i was like at first i'm like why is taryn grabbing that's what griffin? i thought and then too. i'm like wait wait but taryn's not gray and then they're like wyvern 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 i was like oh no <laughs> <laughs> i 
I felt like I was being attacked by Wyvern. And I'm like, they're literally screwed. Like, they're they're stuck here. Yeah. But the way that Violet took them down, again, like you said earlier, she takes her, what she's not great at, mm-hmm. her weaknesses, and uses them as a strength. Yep. Shocks Somehow, the cloud. So- cloud shocks the rest of the Wyvern. They all go down. All four of them. Done easy. so. Just gone. Easy. <laughs> Not easy, and but now, she did it. <laughs> now we're in chapter 45. Oh, yes. Take it away, Ellie. Um, so you had written that Kat's still driving oh, you yeah. insane. I think we all caught, caught wind of that. <laughs> yeah. And, but like between posting, other, and then at this point, you, I don't know. I just would think that almost dying altogether would be a more bonding experience than anything else. Yeah. But... That's not enough. Kat still has to stir the pot. and By showing up at Zayden's room in a see-through robe. Oh, my Ah! goodness. Ah! But honestly, what got me more than that was the fact that she posted a list of all the flyers that Mira had killed Mm, just to stir the pot. Like, I don't know. I'm just... She's not nice. She's She's a mean girl. She's 2.0. She's a mean, mean girl. She is. And we don't like that. No. Um. So you wrote that you would have killed her. I think I would have too. I truly, I that would be the most offensive thing to me. Um. But after that, and Darna starts getting a little bit more aggressive. I really like this side of Indarna. I know we are. She's mm-hmm. just this little aggravated teen. But yes. Ter- Riddick calls her Taryn's miniature in yes. passing conversation, <laughs> and she freaking like, like nearly chomps his that, head off, yes. which it was. So cute, but so scary, too. I loved it. I think it. I like it because she was just so nice in the beginning. But if you think about it, we, we're we hearing her thoughts. So it's we're mm-hmm. getting, like, the comedic relief a little bit, too. But if you think about her actions, that's exactly what any dragon would have done. Yeah. It's not just her being an adolescent. Yeah. Like, and so and I Violet's like, like she's... no more hanging out with Sigail. Yeah. <laughs> she's rubbing <laughs> off on you. Exactly. And so I just like that she's also, like, it, I mean, we know she's growing, but this is mm-hmm. also further proof that she's just turning into a right. more adult dragon. I love it. Then Sawyer asks Violet to teach him how to sign because he has caught the feels for Jacenia, and oh. everybody knows how to sign except for him. So Violet says, yeah, I got you. I um, and then in this chapter, the class that day, the teacher shows everybody about runes and how yeah. runes are essentially strands of magic pulled from their own power into an object and i loved the visual that rebecca wrote into this that you know how violet sees things in her mind of i have to close the door on taryn's power and i have to close the door yeah. to reach zayden things like that or open the door to reach zayden it's the same yeah. thing where you you see these things in your mind so you have to literally like string them together the runes and then you eventually will see them it, you know in real like in your mind in real life so everybody sees her doing this the teacher and they're like okay so she's freaking crazy but then she's able to i forget what she did like explode something i don't remember but do something very physical with the power that she Im- embedded into the yeah. object yeah yeah and so we find out that runes are the great equalizer they were banned mm-hmm. so that flyers couldn't level with riders and now that Flyers do know about runes again. They are, they have a chance at being just as good as the writers without signets. I don't I'm love that. Lie. Well, and I'm not going to lie. I was so confused by the runes. I think I said this mm-hmm. last episode, but like, I just didn't understand them. It felt, I don't, Ooh. I don't know if it was me just being dumb and not mm-hmm. understanding or if it was the way it felt like so much unnecessary. I mean, I guess um, nothing is unnecessary. I'm sure it'll come back at more, even be more prominent at some point. But like, I don't know. It just felt too much. It, yeah. it made me very confused. And truly, again, like through the end of the book, I was confused. Like this once again pulls from Throne Throne of Glass. But I'll get to that. I just well, wrote it down. Maybe I'll understand. Maybe I'll understand Throne of Glass more. I think I honestly, I understand this book more because I read that first, and so I'm like, oh, sense. that that's just like that. That makes sense to me. But. Maybe if I didn't yeah. read that, this this writing wouldn't have made as much sense. Anyways, um, so, but again, I, as a writer within this squad. You keep saying writer, like yeah. R-I-D-E-R, but I keep thinking you're saying writer, like an no. author. 
<laughs> yeah, no, as a dragon rider myself in this book, <laughs> really didn't like that we're level to playing the field with the flyers because, again, they're lesser than. So I don't want them to have but runes and magic that match my signet. Ew. They're, they're not lesser than. The griffins are lesser than dragons. And they're all on the same team now. So no, I think it was not necessary. to me. Never to well, me. <laughs> the only person who's not is Cat. Everyone else is on the same team. And I think they need to be equal moving forward if they're going to even be. I mean, at this, if they're not, then it's just dead weight keeping them around and there's no point. So they have to be. That's they, exactly they what to, it is. And there is no point. I want them out. <laughs> Personally, well, could do better <laughs> off without them. But that's I, just me. I like that. I think it's just foreshadowing for the inclusivity that Zayden and Violet are going to bring to the I know. continent later on. I know, so, I know. And goals, it's we're going to love this. Right now, it's the growing pains. It's the merging of Mercy West and Grace Sloan Hospital. I don't like it. I don't <laughs> want it. Oh my gosh, dude. That is so true. That's exactly what it is. But we end up loving Jackson and we end up loving all the people except yes, for... but not um, at first. Yeah, but I... Towards the end, I can't even remember her name now because I started not liking her that much. The girl that Jackson April marries. Kepner. Thank you. I, I never loved her. And then she gets a little bit better. And then I started getting irritated with her again <laughs> towards the end. She's you she's know, cat. Okay. You want to know something, actually? There's a book. I think it's called Delirium. She is the narrator for it in the audiobook. I oh, yeah. I, I DNF'd it because I cannot stand her. <laughs> And Grace, and I could not listen to her anymore. So I, I oh, listened poor... to like ninety percent of it and was just done. I was just done. That poor girl. She played Epner. She played April Kepner so well that she screwed herself for any other she acting really jobs. Did. She really did. Okay. Also, I don't know. This is like so far removed from myself, but it's the closest I get to Hollywood. So I'm gonna say it. Okay. I kind of kind of cool. More small world than anything. Our realtor that helped us uh, get our house, her son-in-law is the actor that plays, I think his name is Matt, in the, the firefighter that yeah. uh, April is engaged no, with. He's a, no, he's a paramedic. Well, yep. Thank you. Same difference. Mm -hmm. um, paramedic. Firefighter and paramedic? Aren't all firefighters EMTs? You're asking me like I know. <laughs> I well, don't know. So, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure most, if not I all, of them are also EMTs, when you which are that, paramedics. When you asked that, I felt like we were asking a crowd. So I was like, <laughs> "It's just me," it's just, and I'm just, I'm a, just girl. a girl. <laughs> I knew it. I the whole world hear me call exactly what you were gonna say. That's how well I know you. Okay. No, so that's I'm really pretty cool. sure all firefighters, if not if not all of them, most of them are also EMTs, and EMTs are the paramedics. So regardless, no, 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 doesn't matter. Um, also, actor. I looked up EDS real quick, and it is a group of hereditary connective tissue disorders. So I think it's just a disorder, not autoimmune. I thought I thought I read somewhere that it's I could be wrong. Once again, everyone differently. I know nothing. Um, <laughs> now I'm looking up the firefighter thing. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, anyways, I just thought it was kind of cool because uh, I love Grey's Anatomy. So now, anytime I watch that, I'm like, oh, hey, I don't know him. I've never met. Him. Actually, that's not true. I met him once. At you did some very briefly and i fangirled way too hard for someone who had a really small role Ooh. on that show I, but in my mind i'm like it wasn't that met. small it was pretty big he was multiple episodes at least 10 yeah i know but regardless i'm just like he's not meredith gray and i was acting like he was <laughs> so <laughs> so fair but i'm like but you've met them so yeah by proxy i've met them <laughs> <laughs> okay, and today virtually every firefighter in the United States receives medical training as part of their normal training agenda. Many firefighters are classified classified as firefighter EMT or firefighter paramedic. We learned something today, friends. I think you learned something today. I was going to say, not I, Melissa, but... That's what I just said. Okay. <laughs> I have to toot my own horn. But <laughs> we're jumping back into the book. Um, okay. So now we're chapter 46. We find out, finally, that the dagger Violet was carrying had an unlocking rune in it, Zayden had told her. Duh. So when yes. she was in, what this is it called, was, RSC? 
no this no it wasn't rsc it was when she was in the brig when varish was straight up torturing her and then Mm-mm. oh no you're right Mm-mm. it was rsc yeah yeah yeah. so right. they unlock the door and we're just like okay so what we're just gonna let that slide and they're like and then you know people are like um this those are answers moment. that get or questions that get yep. answers you dumb idiot, idiot. this is <laughs> the reveal this is the Duh. dumb idiot moment <laughs> This is I am the dumb idiot. <laughs> okay. Once more. <laughs> we find that out. Thank goodness I can sleep well at night again. Um, Zayden tells Violet about the stones that all of the children oh. of Arisha carried. All these stones had runes in it that activate when the parents were killed by Dragonfire. The parents gave them gave the kids the stones in case they knew anything they were happened. Dying. No, they, they knew, knew th- that was going to happen. Yeah. And so I know that broke my heart. Oh my goodness. And, so- and that's where their relics come from. Exactly. So mar- the rune created the rebellion relics, which protects the marked kids from Melgren's sight. Zayden compared oh. the feeling to getting his signet, and because the rune required dragon fire, somehow I feel like um, Melgren's dragon indirectly created their rebellion relics because of that. He did. Because yeah. C- uh, Coda is the one who burned them all. But they, I think that was... I don't remember. Okay, I don't remember because I you wrote this part of the outline, so I didn't actually reread this part. I don't mm-hmm. remember if it like addresses this at all or not but i i want to say that death by dragon fire was like standard execution in mm-hmm. navarre for for the being a quote-unquote traitor mm-hmm. so i think they anticipated that happening which is why they ruined the stones to be activated with dragon fire mm-hmm. and th- so it is it's ironic like that's Melgrin is the one who created the reason why he can't. I love the irony in it. Yeah, I love yeah. that she wrote that in there. Good writing, Rebecca. We love there it. There it is. We're back, baby. <laughs> We're back. Back and better than ever. So when Violet <laughs> goes to class that day, Devera says that they're all sick of the fighting between the writers yeah. and the flyers. So, so I. they essentially get a purge day, six hours to yeah. fight whoever they want in the form of a challenge. No killing, no signets. No uh, little mind games that the the writer or the flyers have, just hands, just fighting, just so hands, hands and feet. <laughs> fun little side note: um, my parents used to let us do this as kids. I don't That's know if this fun. is good Actually, parenting. <laughs> I think this is probably one of the better parenting decisions your parents have ever made. We, I think we had, genius. I forget what it was called, like free fight or something like that crazy fat I don't know but basically we could just absolutely pummel each other for 30 seconds and then get it out of our systems and be done and I think it might have did. worked better I think it might have worked better if you were all boys and not yeah. just one boy and two girls but I like the concept um don't know if I'm gonna adopt it since I will I not be adopting girl that, household no. so far but <laughs> I took some good hits I, I- I threw some good hits. That's did you all. all do ju- ju- did you all do Taekwondo? No, it was just, just me. It was just me. Oh, so it was so a very unfair advantage. Wrecked. And you were the oldest. You probably wrecked Jenny and your brother. <laughs> I, did. I did. They, For they got seconds, rocked. They just got yeah. <laughs> rocked. <laughs> okay. That's hilarious. I know. It's terrible. Okay. So then we find well, out. Obviously. Cat challenges After, Violet now. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But in, in the same sentence where Devera is telling them, once you're done with this fight, then you have to absorb one drift of flyers into your squad. So that is the official meshing Are of we, the teams. No, 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 no. We need to talk about their fight because... No, we are talking about their fight. That happens oh, okay. before their Sorry. fight. She says it. So Please, sweet. Melissa. <laughs> So then Kat challenges Violet, of course, and as they're going at it, Violet realizes Kat fights identically to herself because guess why? They were both trained by Zayden. They were both trained by Zayden. What I a gnarly I got so fun jealous fact. reading that. I, yeah. I was Violet and I got jealous. That was. I did too. I did too. It wasn't nice. It wasn't, I felt icky and horrible and sad. Um. So <laughs> Violet, as she's like taking a solid beating by Kat, realizes yeah i was trained by zayden but i was also trained by rhiannon so pulls out all those moves and beats the ever-living garbage out of cat which was such a good feeling because cat needed a good humbling well and i like that all, while all this is happening violet is doing her best to because cat is ignoring the rules and still using her signet to 
it make Violet's emotions more intense, but she's yeah. able to channel that into her physical fighting and not skip a beat, which loved that. Loved mm-hmm. it. Violet yeah. is just so much smarter than Cat. Cat is the scum of the earth. And I hate it. I don't know. I'm still laughing about just the imagery of like <laughs> me just rocking my siblings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I'm crying. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then. I wish I was a fly on the wall. I know. I wish I could relive and see that too. But, anyways. So Kat keeps taunting Violet in the midst of getting beaten. Um, but she's hitting her in like the weak emotional spots, making her more jealous than ever and angry talking about Zayden, personal things between them. It's very uncomfortable to read. Can't imagine being in the moment of that. Kat uses her mind work. Yeah, go ahead. Well, keep going. I don't want to jump the gun here, but can we talk about the finger comment? I did. I wasn't going to mention that. Go ahead. We We can't. You can. I can't. I'm uncomfortable. Go ahead. Literally, I think I would shrivel up and die. If I'm physically fighting my boyf's ex girly girl, and she makes a comment about a sexual thing, you don't take off your headphones. I, <laughs> I can hear it in your microphone. <laughs> Some sexual thing that he does that she probably loves, and she it ruins that for me. I, oh man, I don't even want to know what I would do. I'd cry, no, I'd, first off. I'd, I'd just, cry later. I would just cry on the ground. I would I would think I'd get so mad in the moment, and then mm-hmm. the second whatever's done, I'd cry. <laughs> I, yeah. I couldn't do it. Well, I would be with, so insecure moving forward yeah. at that point that everything I like was from someone else. Yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't it would, do it. I, it messed me up. So mixed with that and the <laughs> mind work that Kat's using to heighten Violet's emotions, Violet yeah. nearly kills her. She has her hands around Kat's I throat. Wish she did. She's She's this close. And to me, I'm like, Kat, why wouldn't you stop? Exactly. Like, do you exactly. want to die? Whatever, yeah. though. You, you see where this is going, right? I know. Maybe, so, maybe stop. <laughs> maybe maybe don't. So yeah. Violet recognizes this in herself. She's just so unhinged. She throws down the mind bond to Zayden. I need your help, which I just almost, I almost cried during that. Like to know, know yourself so deeply that like the only person that can get me out of this person I love the most. I know. So she feels him wrap his arms around her and yank oh. her off of uh cat and takes her to an empty hall room. I goosebumps. love this. Yeah. Right I now. love it. Goose- and goosebumps for the entirety of the next scene. Yeah. I can't. Which is chapter 48. Zayden takes Violet into an empty hall and checks on her. He forces her to sit in this massive chair, a.k.a. the throne. We find that out in a few few more paragraphs. Um, And he wants her to talk to him. She's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Except she has massive, like, damaged pride. She's super insecure, as we all would be. Yes, (laughs) yes, yes, but no. Um, (laughs) Zayden tells her that he will always choose her. And as he's saying that, he starts to undress her. And she's like, no, 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 we can't. This is essentially a public room. And Zayden was like, it's my house. These are all my rooms. And line of the year, would you like to take it away? My house, my chair, my woman. Ah! Weak. Weak, Weak in the, the knees. knees. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the, again, this is a perfect instance of two things. One, women who write men for women and two things that I would probably not love in real life but absolutely eat up yep. in books yeah like I think if someone said my woman if my I'd husband be like, okay. said, called me his woman I'd be like who are you but if Zayden Ryerson called me his woman don't do I'd... the zaddy thing zaddy no <laughs> <laughs> okay you said it first I had to. Okay. I actually so, wasn't going to say it until you brought it up. I just felt it in my bones. I felt it coming. Okay. So in the middle of this like very passionate moment between them, he tangles, quote, tangles into her mind and she can hear his thoughts. Oh my God. I love this part. I, I love what he was saying. I loved that she got that perspective from him, but what to heck? How, how are you doing that? Okay. Let's be real. I know I've said a lot of other theories, uh-huh. Theory number 45, maybe this go. is her next signet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that too. Well, I feel like everyone talks so much. I-, I haven't heard any theories about this being her other signet. Maybe for good reason. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. But I don't know. I 
I'm I feel like if I say enough theories, one of them will be right, and then I can look back and be like, I called it, even yeah. though I'm not like tying myself to any. Except even though it might sound different based on how excited I got in our last episode over something that I explained so poorly. But I would like to I would like to invoke. <laughs> Um, a skip forward 30 seconds. I will take only 30 seconds to say my piece. Ready? And yes, go. <laughs> we know how he has two signets in the end. We know that. And how that still does like, not, yeah. that still does not justify what just happened. She can't be reading his mind. So this has to be her. Like he wouldn't, exactly. he couldn't give that. What's happening? Was, well, but one, his second signet, his intrinsic abilities, he can't read minds. He can only read intentions. He I know doesn't, he, doesn't he can't know exactly share what you're thinking. exactly. So and I was he, like, he dude, can't what? share that. So what, you're and right. this isn't part and of the he didn't bond. Know what, well, and he didn't even know that she was able to do that. Yeah, he didn't know that was happening. Yeah, until afterwards. So okay. that had so that's to be it. her. That's it. Resume. That's all we're saying. Resume. Um. So the thing though is that like we all just moved on from that. She said, "What just happened?" But then he's across the room, like, "No, no, no, I'm not worthy of you," and like, "I love you so much." That all goes on. That's fine. But we never, we never address what just happened, and that bugs me. <laughs> Here I am, the dumb idiot again. Like, what are we just gonna skip past it? I know it'll be addressed. Well, I trust you, Rebecca. I if because it's not addressed is one of the reasons why I feel like it is a strong contender. As strong yeah. as my other 47 theories 47. <laughs> for what her yes um, second signet could be because mm-hmm. she's we know this for a fact in an interview she has addressed we've talked about this too she has addressed that Violet will have a second signet in the same way that Zayden does but for mm-hmm. different reasons except we don't know what it is except she did say it's already been mentioned it's not going to be something that comes out of left field it's Ma'am, been alluded you to can't- Ma'am, you can't mention that Zayden has a second signet yet. Fast forward. I'm invoking. Fast oh no! Forward. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I don't know what to do. Should we? No. Should we write that out or just? Keep I'm going? assuming everyone has already read read the book. And okay. truthfully, truthfully, in my opinion, that is not the wildest thing that happens at the end. That is okay. almost <laughs> like there's so much other stuff that happens. I that to me was the biggest twist for for me. That was it. Okay, the, I keep going. For me, it was not. There was a lot of other things that happened that I did not. That one was more expected of because they kind of talk about it in fourth week, I guess. But then I guess the reasoning why. Anyways, whatever. the reasoning why threw me for a loop. Okay, so Zayden reassures her that she Violet is the one he wants. She's the first and only woman he's ever loved. Love that. Zayden tells Violet that mm. Kat's able to mess with her so much because Violet wasn't wearing the daggers that he gave her from last year because they had runes to defend from that yep. gift. So Violet and I realized that Zayden was already planning to have her so entwined in his life from so early on that she would need that kind of protection, which tears. That was so cute. Not actual I know, tears. Also, I didn't cry, but. I know. I really liked that. It was really sweet. But, but, but if I'm going to just be annoying he thought he that right there the intention of forethought is proven with that yet he still didn't talk about her which well, kind of know he has think too much about it he has some communication issues we know I that i know but i just wish they didn't Anyways. i know okay so chapter 49 everyone violet squad absorbs cat's drift because they're the two strongest which we could Obviously. have seen that coming but i still hate it so they're together forever now <laughs> Grow up. They might as well be married. <laughs> yeah. Kat's relentless and still tries to make digs at Violet. We still hate Which, her. Still don't even understand know. how that could possibly. She literally almost killed you. You and have to give I her like, like a little bit of props though, because she took such a massive beating and lost so hard and is losing in every way. And yet is so relentless. You got to give <laughs> her a little trying. like, okay, <laughs> you yeah. do you. Um, A little Dane redemption. So we, I love this. Violet needs help yeah. with. She doesn't say what yet, and he's just like, "Yeah, okay," without hesitation. So, I know. Thanks, that Dane. Funny. That's nice. Honestly, I've said it. I'm not a Dane hater. I, he's mm-hmm. not. I will be so bummed if he is the real enemies <laughs> to lovers. I really don't see that happening. I don't think so. But I would hate that. Except, but I don't. I don't hate him. But he we don't is hate like, him. To me, yeah, he he's is a good friend. Like a fairly likable character for me at this point. Yeah, same here. I'm just gonna say it. Um, so with that being said, Violet and Dane start to decipher Warwick's journal again, but together this time, because he 
has a pretty good knowledge on like the old language. Um, realizing though that some of the translations she originally had were wrong. So that's probably why the words were not working yet. That's Violet straight up why the words yeah. were not working. <laughs> You got me there. Violet straight up asked <laughs> Dane about his deceit and if he read her memories every time he touched her in the past year. And his responses seemed so genuine to me, and I was absolutely sold. He didn't know about his dad or the venom. Yeah. Um, and Violet says to him, like, I don't hate you. And I just love redemptions. I know. And once again, no, I don't bring even. to you don't. No. the Tamlin redemption no. needs to be had. Except the uh, difference is Tamlin. What what the reason? Like I love the Dame Redem- Dame the Dane Redemption. I love that he g- was so genuine. Like he made mistakes, but he's owned up to them for the most part, mm-hmm. and he sees the light. And now he's on. He's a good on the good side. Mm-hmm. Tamlin really lost it for me during the High Lords meeting. When he Ooh, yeah, was, that was so verbally rough. accosting Feyre in front of everyone. And because, I mean, we, I, I've said this too, before. He's not the real enemy, obviously. We, like, love to hate him. But, like, he's really just a boy who was in love with a girl who was insecure about their relationship and did, made all the wrong choices. Like, at the end of the day, he's not, he didn't. It, it was wasn't, just he didn't him. misunderstand. It was his bad intention. Like he was well, but, not but good. Like, yeah, he just he doesn't know how to read a room. That's really right. like his biggest fault. And but this was very calculated. Him doing that was very calculated. He knew exactly what he was doing at that point. And I get it. He's coming from a place of hurt. But that right there showed that he's not the bigger person, that he's a little baby tampon, and he doesn't deserve a redemption anymore because of that. Dane so never true. did that. Well, I don't want to say true. Dane, yeah, well, it is. I convinced you for a second. Your first response is your heart's answer. It's my heart's, <laughs> my heart's cry. My cry for help. Now, now you're on my t- team, Team Eris Redemption, not Team Talon Redemption. I want both. There you go. Okay, okay. Well, so they realize that they need to imbue the word stone. Um, Violet says like, okay, we're going to come down here every day to imbue and I'll get Zayden to come down here too and whoever else I can. So didn't they say that though, out. like normally it takes forever to imbue even just like a small stone mm-hmm. but somehow they were able to imbue this massive rock in like three days <laughs> it's not that I, quick, it was more than three days but it wasn't it, i couldn't have been more than two weeks though right it, it was some short amount of time again yeah. we let it slide now chapter 50 <laughs> final um violet is working final. on her aiming with the lightning Felix, her trainer, holds the orb from her, and she's finally able to trickle some lightning to it since it attracts energy. So there's finally some hope that she can aim and control it. And I'm tired of acting like there's not. I was about to say, but are we really surprised that she can't? No, but it's taken so long to to just... I feel like the real slow burn in this story is her signet. Honestly. And now she's going to get a second one. We haven't even gotten there. Anyways, she can't even handle her first yet. No. So Violet goes about daily life after her training with Felix, but she sees Heaton, Bodie, and Garrick talking about or talking, and Heaton is injured. Uh, Heaton tells Violet that Venon took Pavis, the city, and the wing leader Nira died along with her dragon. You could may, might as well just speak gibberish to me. I know none of these cities and none of these people. Who, but that's amazing. Who is this? Who is this person? What is this place? And why does it matter if they're dead? <laughs> so Violet, but this is why it matters. Um, all your all your questions will be answered right here. Violet <laughs> realizes that the venom essentially skipped over the city before Pavis and hundreds of other miles in order to get closer to Erasia because they're coming for them. And that's where we leave wah, off this wah, week. Wah. That, I, it didn't really, I wasn't, that had to have happened at some point. Are we, we're not surprised. I mean, we're the words surprised. still aren't up, but we're not, I mean, the Wyvern was potentially already in Erasia because of them getting to the cl- Cliffs of Drailer. Like, I realize that's not, that's like on the border though. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what to say. I, I don't, I, I, I wasn't it, as surprised I'm by not that. Surprised. Yeah, I really wasn't that surprised by that, but. Maybe that's on me. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm next. This next episode, man. There's a lot to unpack. So much to unpack. We're it's gonna have so to heavy. really, a really, really good job at not 
getting off on tangents because otherwise it's going to be eight hours long. <laughs> if I'm just talking, it's going to be eight hours long. So I'm going to need you to help me. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Well, we'll 50, 50 it. Yeah. <laughs> but well, that was episode, that. I almost said episode five, part five, episode 20. Um, don't forget, excuse me, man. I don't know what it is today. Don't forget to like subscribe again if you haven't if you have do it again i don't know Mm -hmm. can you do it twice unfollow refollow just kidding don't do that um i hope everyone has a great week next week will be our final part of iron flame and then we're going to be jumping into throne of glass which everyone voted for between throne of glass divine rivals and caraval which we can do one more vote because there are two ways you can start throne of glass you can start with the prequel assassin's blade or you can start with book one throne of glass i personally started with throne of glass but i've heard if you want okay so this is actually maybe we can just decide amongst ourselves (laughs) if you want a better plot start with throne of glass if you want a better romance start with assassin's blade now, but I'm going to tell you something. Throne of Glass. The what next one. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking up at my books, but I can't see them. The next one and possibly the next one are the three most boring in the series. And Assassin's Blade is where it picks up. So if you start with Assassin's Blade, I think you're you going like to more. You're going to like it and then be kind of bummed that like, oh, it's slowing down. I was you got to earn it, in my opinion. I, I was talking to my cousins. Um, I have uh, three adult female cousins that we all, all are all within like four years of each other, maybe a little bit mm-hmm. more, but, and all of, they've all read Throne of Glass already. Actually, two of them have, one of them hasn't. And I was talking with them and they have very, one of them is like, you have to read Assassin's Blade first for, like you said, it, like it makes it more interesting. Mm-hmm. The other one is like, you absolutely cannot because it ruins the plot. It like ruin you. It, you're not going to be like, <gasps> when things happen and it's going to, it's a mistake. No, that. I'd argue the opposite. I think you would be more <gasps> if you read Assassin's Blade first, but it didn't kill me knowing what happens when I Wait, when I read I Throne of the... when I read I if you, you read Throne of Glass Assassin's... if you no if you read Throne of Glass first you won't have a mic drop with Assassin's Blade. You'll know what's go- what's happening going in. If you read Assassin's I it was Blade the other first, way around. if you read Assassin's Blade oh. first, you'll you won't know what's happening going in. You'll have more of a shock factor moment. But it Maybe didn't it kill me. Assassin's... Okay, you know what? Might I, be the way. I, I decided I am going to read. Okay, because I, I know I've said this. Because do it the opposite of me. Yet. Yeah, I was yeah. just about to say, you read it one way, so I want to read it the And then we'll join so notes. That... Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. I love it. Um. Also, next episode has not been confirmed yet, but I really want to get my, well, our, mostly mine, but friend Taylor on <gasps> that episode. Yeah! Because she has so she's the theory queen and she yes. has so many good theories after reading Iron Flame about what is gonna happen. And I she I won't do it justice if I'm talking about them. If she just gives me her theories, I want her to explain them. So yes. TBD, I'm not sure if she's gonna be able yes, to yes, yes. make our recording or not, but you all will be very lucky to hear her thoughts <laughs> if if she is. So she might. Awesome. We might have a fun special guest next episode. Maybe, maybe. TBD again. But um, love it. Yeah. Hope again. Yeah. Hope everyone just has a great week, and I hope it is relaxing. And I'm speaking that over myself. And we will see you next time. Not me. I'll be fine. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.